Hey, don't take it out on the podium. Oh, man, you're a brute. <laughs> don't take it out on the podium. I can't even introduce a Dane College of Complexes state tonight without having trouble. All right, my name is Tim. Hi, Tim. Me and Charlie are going to be doing a presentation on fake news. And there seems to be a conspiracy tonight no. against us getting set up on time. Andy, Andy, blame Andy. No, we're not going to blame Andy. We're going to blame Lady Luck. She gave us the Cubs victory, but then she moved to Washington and gave us Trump. Now, the College of Complexes consists of the following three things. We're going to have a brief announcements period, then we're going to have a, a, a speech, and then we're going to get into our questions and answers. We're going to, we don't have any amplification tonight, so we're going to ask you to please speak up. All right. We can do that. Now, go ahead. Uh, if everybody can keep the crosstalk and the noise down because we don't have the mic and the speaker. Heather? So keep the area quiet so you can hear the speaker up here. We would really appreciate it. Thank you so much in advance. Okay. Yeah, you gotta listen to me. No. Oh, oh, oh no. I want you to take up his notes. Fortunately, can I get a dollar back for my three dollars? Refund, oh, refund. I, I gotta put my two cents in too, so. Refund. All right, let's get to this. We're gonna be doing a co presentation tonight. Oh boy. My remarks are gonna be somewhat limited because I've seen Charlie's presentation and he's covered a lot of ground that I wanted to cover. So, Charlie, you're going to be the main presenter tonight. Let's get on with the thing. Let's welcome Mr. Charlie Paydock. All right, Charlie. The, uh, I, uh, I was amazed that a new term entered our vocabulary. And that was fake news. And all the accusations flying back and forth during the campaign regarding fake news. So uh, I brought to my speaker speaking. They don't seem to care. No, no, we want to listen to the speaker. They don't. That's all right, Margaret. All right, but nevertheless, uh, I, I, I thought I'd be look into, I said, that's not new. There's, there's, American history is full of fake news, which has precipitated any number of events in our history. Now, I'm not necessarily talking about historical inaccuracies, but we will get a touch a little bit on that. But basically, I'm thinking of things that are ideas that were perpetuated among the population uh, to change their views or opinions. Uh, anyhow, misconceptions that were generated by the media, if you want. Okay, and uh, we've long had a, a strong affiliation for the news. This is a, a painting in the uh, gallery in Washington, National Gallery, entitled War News from Mexico. And at the post office, you can see uh, half the town is gathered there uh, to pick on it. And it's a fitting statement of the interest in the media in this country. Uh, now what precipitated this is that I heard the president declare fake news media was the enemy of the American people. And he's upset about what he considered to be unfair and inaccurate coverage of his administration. True. True. <laughs> but fake news are facts. Let's have a definition here. But that's deliberately published reports of alleged incidences, propaganda, and disinformation purporting to be real news or facts, often using the media. We're here to enjoy our dinner. We're not here to enjoy our dinner. Well, you know, I am talking. I'm the one that's Go ahead, Charlie. 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 Let's just let him spend six months with Charlie. 
Charlie. Charlie. Anyhow. Charlie. Oh, what's that? Oh, okay. Thanks. All right, we got that. Let's see here. What was that? What was that one that went so fast? Oops. Boston Massacre. Okay, I thought I'd. Uh, so we got that. All right, this really isn't in the news, but I wanted to begin to show you how, in, in the inception of our country, the events that took place in the nation have been distorted. And probably the best one is uh, the things that are said about uh, Thanksgiving. Now, absolutely nothing in that picture is true. <laughs> nothing that they're wearing that does not reflect their clothing. Uh, under no circumstances did they get together with the Indians. The Wapanoics are a very small tribe today. I've had the fortunate experience to meet one of them, which is pretty unusual because there are not many of them. Uh, for various reasons you can understand. Now if they were going to have some sort of celebration on the harvest, it would have been in September and they would have gone to church. They wouldn't have had a party. Uh, but anyhow, that's just one of the things uh, that I wanted to start with. Now, the conflict with the media began uh, Right at the beginning, in 1734, many of you are familiar with this case, but John Peter Zenger was put on trial for saying satirical attacks about the uh, governor. Uh, the jury, however, acquitted him uh, for the freedom of the press. Uh, the result was emerging tensions between the media and the government which continue until today. Uh, just to show you the interest in the news, by the midst, by the, about the time of the revolution, there were 24 weekly newspapers in the colonies. Now here you see a guy like you guys studying to go to the college of conflicts. <laughs> All right, now one of the first media events that really was a fake news or distortion, and if you want, not necessarily fake but embellished, was the Boston Massacre. This is a painting done by Paul Revere, and uh, the very name of it, I mean, there was an altercation, of course, between the British soldiers and the town inhabitants. Unfortunately, uh, you know, there were some shots fired. Uh, neither one was ever blamed, but uh, according to the colonials at the time, it became a massacre. And this famous illustration, Coffins, uh, so they twisted the event. Uh, I don't believe any of the British soldiers were, were really punished uh, in this week, mild, mild uh, things. Now at the time, a lot of the media criticism of the political powers was based in political cartoons. And this one you can see here, this is the, uh, representing America, the Indian maiden. And these figures would have been recognized by anyone at the, living at that time period. Uh, you can see here they're ashamed of what they're doing to America. You know, to following her and watching their uh, not doing, coming to her assistance and things like this. I love these political cartoons, you can study them. But as I say, we don't know all of these figures, but they would know these are, you know, the prominent politicians of the time. Now, I also, moving on in time, we're moving chronologically, is that uh, there was, of course, the Battle of Lexington and Concord. And just to show you the media bias that was creeping in, that the Salem, Massachusetts Gazette couldn't have a full color account of the battle, giving details of the burning village and barbarian, barbarities charged to the British uh, and praising the militia who were filled with higher sentiments of humanity. Uh, oh. Actually, this was, this was a battle where the British are lucky that they, they had reinforcements or they wouldn't have, would not have made it back to town. 
That's right. This, they were they were tough. There was there, there was some real fighting going on there by the colonials. So uh, believe you me, they took a whooping on this one. Thanks for the Second Amendment. We're gonna get into that, Steve. Okay, now another thing in the media at the time, there were two groups that were vilified. Uh, the British made an alliance with the Indians. The Indians trusted the British because they knew the colonials were hungry for land. So they said, well, we better go with these British. They don't, these Americans, they want nothing but our, our, our lands. Um, but there were incidences uh, which fueled the ranks. When these stories got around and in the press, uh, this is actually a Jane Grey. She was a British, uh, the fiance of a British officer. And they said if they let the Indians massacre their own women, what do you think is going to happen to our women? And it swelled the ranks, and especially the Battle of Saratoga. This, was, this story got around. Uh, this. Now the other one were the Hessian soldiers. And the Hessians actually weren't that bad. But they, it seemed it kind of bothered them that, you know, these foreigners were on their soil. Uh, it actually was a lot cheaper to, to hire soldiers than to use your own, draft your own people and stuff like that. And they were highly qualified and for the most part professionals. Uh, I don't know of any accounts where they did acted untowardly. But nevertheless, these two groups were vilified in the press and spoken word. Now you talk about gun control. I came, here's how it creeps in. Uh, I came across this picture here of the woman defending herself from the oncoming British. Actually, there's only one incident where a colonial woman picked up a weapon and took on some British soldiers down in the Carolinas. And she uh, cornered a couple British soldiers. She got the drop on them. But now there were women that served in the forces to some extent, but only one incident where a woman did. But this is like, yeah, you need guns because the British are gunning. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, now moving on. We're moving on. And who should show up? Well, I just, the founding father, George Washington. Georgie. In which he got the jacks to chop the cherry tree, right? Yes. No. Come on. This cherry tree story and throwing the coin over the Potomac. <laughs> uh, the first guy, there was the first guy right after George Washington passed away. A guy called Parson Weems wrote a biography uh, of George Washington, and that's where these stories started entering uh, our, our culture. Uh, that father cannot tell a lie. He bought it. Father gave him an ax and no, his, you know, uh, a man of all honesty and. Oh, throwing a coin across. I love that. They, the way the story was reading, he threw a silver dollar over the Potomac. Potomac is about 300 feet wide. That's the Potomac, Charlie, the Rappahannock. The Rappahannock. Oh, there we go, there we go. And Fake it's about 300 ready. feet wide. <laughs> and they didn't have silver dollars yet in those days. But anyhow. That was good. Anyhow, another one coming on is the Battle of Trenton here. And this was in the in the nation's capital, and it's in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Washington crossing the Delaware there at the Battle of Trenton uh, when things, fortunes were at the lowest ebb. Uh, these are times that tried on souls, and they were short on victories, right? Actually, this is, all of these things in that picture are inaccurate. He didn't have a, that uniform only came on later. This flag was not adapted. These ice flows, the Delaware is a little tiny river. It's not much of a river. I was just there last week at Washington's Crossing, as a matter of fact. Uh, these ice flows are actually painted what the artists thought that what happened in the Rhine River in Europe. It didn't, it didn't have ice like this. and. Uh, Oh, it happened in the middle of the night. There was no sun. 
And they didn't use boats, they actually used ferries, but that's not as exciting. But anyhow, and these uniforms are wrong, other things, you could get things like that. Okay. Now another thing that crept into the, the our nation's consciousness is that uh, the citizen soldier, right, with his own weaponry and things like that. Uh, Yankee Doodle, uh, as they were mocked to some extent by the British regulars, uh, and with some justification, they were not terribly effective uh, as a fighting force. And without getting into a separate topic, but George Washington spent many years, and he said we need to have a well-established regular army that can stand the field. These guys would take a shot or two and run. They figured out how to use them. They would have them come out, take a shot or two, and then they said, you can run away. And the regular troops would come up and, and fight. So uh, the, the notion of the citizen soldier is completely erroneous. It just did not exist. They did participate in certain battles, unadmittedly, but in the Carolinas in particular. But there was a regular army with regular uniforms supplied largely with French weapons and uniforms <coughs> that they trained and was the <coughs> crux of the army. So, anything here about that. Now moving on, as a young man I read a book on Old Style of Ironsides, the USS Constitution, which you can go see in Boston. And I read all these wonderful stories. And I like here, they got him, a, look at this guy, man, he's getting blasted out of the ship. Um, actually, this war, the United States didn't have much to toot about. I mean, they got whooped. <laughs> all, one guy. One they got whooped all over the place. And actually, the two boats in the battle were locked, somehow got locked into one another and circled around. So, but nevertheless, we've got to celebrate the one big event, the one big victory of this. You know, I was amazed as this story, and I found out there's 40,000 books written on the War of 1812. Who wrote all those? Let's move on. All right, uh, we're moving on. Okay. Louder. Inspired by Andrew Jackson's uh, campaign of 1828. Uh, they decided the following decades to portray their candidates as hard-working man of the people. And this came to fruition in 1840 with uh, Harrison. Um, he was a guy who, you, who would invite you into his log cabin for hard cider. Yeah. This guy had a lot of money and lived in a mansion. <laughs> <laughs> and the other guy, his opponent, was the guy who actually, his, his dad was a tavern keeper and lived in a cabin. It's a summer cottage. So it's just the opposite. <laughs> but they switch things around. You can see him here come on in and have a, have a booze. But uh, this is where uh, your campaign stuff came in. I just came across this cartoon. This is another issue at the time. But I like this. This political guy is so drunk he's got to lean up against a tree. <laughs> but, um, yeah, social qualities of our candidate. So it started creeping in. Anybody thinks that dirty campaigning is brand new, that's not the case. There were certain contests over the years that did it. Now one of the things that covers the entire period, the mentality, and this was in the press, Horace Greeley, Go West, young man, was the concept of manifest destiny, that the United States would extend from sea to sea. And you could see there was a, something like a spirit guiding, and the, with the discovery of the Cumberland Gap in 1763, that they could go west. Believe you me, you need a gap to go. I was just in the mountains last week. Without the gap, you, you're not going to get anywhere. You take but the river. river. Mm -hmm. You take the river. Yes, exactly. That's the only way. All right. But you can see here some of the propaganda. Okay. Now, probably one of the first major episodes following this concept of manifest destiny 
was the propaganda that came about with the war with Mexico, which began, now listen to this, like many other conflicts, with a little border skirmish. What happened was a patrol of Americans, about 70 of them, ran into the entire Mexican army. <laughs> and a couple of them got killed, unfortunately. But nevertheless, uh, the America had its eyes on the, on the Western Territory. As I say, they had this. So the propaganda at the time, Henry David Thoreau was, we'll hear next week, was opposed to this. Other people, even Ulysses Grant, was opposed to this conflict. So there was, uh, but anyhow, uh, the fuels were raged. Remember the Alamo and things like this. Uh, what year but, was that? What year? We know? 1846. Wow. Um, anyhow, when the dust cleared, Mexico lost about one third of its territory, including all present day California, United, Utah, Nevada, Arizona, and New Mexico. And there's some of the pictures embellishing this. Look at the Mexicans there. Get out. You know. <laughs> uh, no, you know, victoriously on a white horse, you know, prancing in the town. I don't, they really didn't have ceremonies like this at the conclusion of the battle. But uh, these are some of the things you can see uh, to feed the minds of the people back home. Uh, on another topic, since we're talking about the frontier, uh, was the image that was portrayed in the media in the minds of the people of the Native Americans on the frontier. And you can see here, these uh, the pilgrims are having some difficulties getting along with this, uh, marginalizing a certain ethnic group. Uh, certainly, who have not seen these things circle the wagons? That they were not an impediment to progress. Uh, we were entering their land, uh, so pictures like this were common at the time period. Uh, things that really fueled it were tragic episodes like Custer's last stand during the during which took place during the full Indian Wars, uh, which extended a well, better part of three quarters of a century. <laughs> and last of all, bringing up our, our concept of this, yeah. our crazy yahoos like Buffalo Bill Cody. Yeah, <laughs> we love them. And his wild wood show, you can see here, he's, he's got, you know, the cabin. They actually would stage this as part of the evening's entertainment. <laughs> so you could go see <laughs> the Indian village get raided, you know. Real I mean, news, that's real news. Yeah, uh, so this is part of the culture of the time. Okay, I just I posted things about this because of the Supreme Court amendment that disparagement, disparaging local <clears throat> logos the Supreme Court has said are totally appropriate in the United States. So even if you have a logo that's offensive to some ethnic group, hey, they say it's okay, you know. Some Cleveland Indian guys here, Washington Redskin fans, their plastic feathers. Now another thing that kind of kind of changed the minds of the people, also in line with this manifest destiny, I was just out here out here in New York State on vacation, was the paintings, the artwork of the time. The people would come and see these paintings. They'd pay like 25 cents. They were like going to see a, a special event or a movie. And they, these are enormous paintings, Bierstadt and things like that. They have them in the museum in, in Washington. And uh, people would see this and they got some idea that this is how it looked. I mean, it's nice pristine wilderness and you may find locations like this, but these are all imaginary. These guys may not even have been here. They uh, and they didn't have they didn't take the art stuff out in the wilderness. These were not done. They may do some sketches of a rural area, of forest or something. But this was the concept that people had. So I think I'd head out west too. But nevertheless this was some of the misconceptions that the whole place looked like looked like this. And anybody who knows the West knows that's conceivably not the case. Now another thing that fed the misconceptions 
to the fake, fake news with the railroads. Like here, offering lands in Nebraska. Actually, these aren't bad. Bad. This soil isn't terribly bad. Kansas, Nebraska, you know, but uh, good soil for wheat, corn, and fruit. I don't know if Southwest Kansas is the first place I'd want to put a farm personally, <laughs> but uh, the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe, uh, so actually it's a little dry. It's a little too dry. It's all it's good for wheat. That's about it. The other thing is, this is what the realistic thing, the kind of pioneers really, this is the realistic thing of what they encountered out there when they went west. And it is glory, the wilder stuff. Um, that, you know, fun fun in the prairies, you know. And ultimately, of course, the prairies, with the dust bowl and things like that, is conceivably the very worst place uh, uh, to settle. Uh, given the climatic conditions. Um, let's see. Another thing that was pushed, that was fake news at the time, were these 49ers. Uh, go, you know, go, go, get, go get cold. I actually lived on the route of the 49ers. Um, and uh, if you look at this, this guy came back and he's going to give a lecture on gold mining. And uh, he says, you can use this device. You can find gold from half an ounce to a nugget of half a pound. Yeah. Now, if you found a half a pound nugget, Done. you could retire Done. for a long, long time. <laughs> I actually have seen the largest <coughs> nugget, and I, that might be a pound or something. <laughs> it's getting the impression that you can just go out there and find one of these, you know, and that be it, you know, no big deal, you know. Um, anyhow, he said back, oh, here he is, you know, back home and send this hello uh, to his family, you know, doing okay. All right, now we're proceeding on, and we're getting into the Civil War period. And this, uh, this is another media event that really took off. There's John Brown Parade at Harper's Ferry, uh, West Virginia. And he was going to have a slave insurrection. <coughs> and start a slave insurrection. And the one thing the Southerners were fearful of were slave insurrections, even though there was little or no incidents of it. I mean that. I looked into this topic, and there were one or two things, but it was much the, the fear of it was fed by the media and the accounts way beyond the reality. And John Brown's raid was nothing. It fizzled, and he never got out of the town. Harper's <laughs> He got trapped right in the center of town, you know. That's what I mean. It, it just, and he got it, he was surrounded by a battalion and a U.S. Army. It just didn't go anywhere. That's what I mean. But it fear, spread fear to everyone, even though it was, it was the least successful thing, but he was captured alive, wounded, and they had a big trial. So everybody has different views on John Brown. Some people think he was a, a wonderful guy, and other people, amongst them myself, think he was like kind of nuts. Cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. And I used to argue with one of the guys here at the college, but, uh, like an old Osawatomi, he's a dangerous guy. He's a terrorist kind of guy. All right, another thing that came along, the racial sentiments uh, were, were competing here. As I said, there were fake news reports of slave uprising and cry, uh, or crimes by slaves uh, when that is not the case. Uh, nevertheless, there's a battle of minds and so you had, you know, competing news stories. Uh, now, Trump is belly aching about the news media. But I'll tell you one thing. There's one guy who caught it more than Trump ever has, never will, and that was Abe Lincoln. Abe. Now this is from when he got in. This is even before he got inaugurated. He's in a dress. 
They got them running away like a, in a dress. I ain't not like a like a girly. <laughs> you know, and laughing. See, they're like, <laughs> chasing them out of town. They like him. They think he's pretty. Oh, they think. Look at this. Everybody in here, they're taking him. They say he belongs in a lunatic asylum. No, Trump is upset about some things said about him. But look at this. How'd you like to read this? Open up your newspaper. Long line. There's a long line of this. There's all kinds of things that these statements we haven't got time to read them. Are great. Just because uh, I want I want everybody to have a share of everything. <laughs> That's you, Sid. These are his followers. That's you, Sid. <laughs> and they're all they're all like lefties. <laughs> Anyhow, they also got age. He's cheating on baseball. He's using a, what do you, what do you call it? Extra long bat. No, it, that's a... Um, cricket. cricket, cricket. No, no. He's a rail. I can't. Yeah, yeah he's using a rail. <laughs> so he's, he's and there's another one. Look at this. He was writing his own stories. He was, uh, he was, he was his own war correspondent. Uh, All right, moving on. We got through the war, Lincoln. Uh, we're seeing some of the... I'm not, I'm not trying to correct misconceptions of history. There's plenty of those. But this is one that is also politically and in the news. Now, if you look at these, are, these are the land grants to the transcontinental railroads, right? Yes. No. <laughs> this is a political advertising. It's political propaganda. It's fake news for the election of 1884. It's just drawn, drawn in. And matter of fact, this thing it shows up in history books from time to time. And even railroad guys seem to buy into this. This is the real picture of the land grants uh, uh, that were given to it. And largely, this is, this is the original transcontinental railroad, and this is the Northern Pacific. That's the basic one. And, and to be honest with you, you kind of needed a land grant for at least this railroad, because they were building in the wilderness. There were no towns. Well, who wants a railroad where there ain't no town? Nobody. There ain't no passengers, no <laughs> business. It's just, you know, you know, nobody lives there. You know, so in the same thing up here, uh, well, he kind of wheeled and kneeled, but again, that was wilderness, you know. Um, anyhow, we're moving on. The next thing that came up that caught a lot of me in the news and variations of truth on very accuracy with the labor struggles in the latter part of the 19th century. Railroad strike of 1877, which, which took place right here in Chicago in 18th and Alstead. Uh, Homestead Steel in Pittsburgh, Haymarket in Chicago, Pullman also in Chicago, and the Bread and Roses uh, of the Weaving Girls in Massachusetts. So, and each of these you could see generated their own uh, look at she's pulling his hair here, the policeman. Look at that. What kind, what kind of lady is this? Look at that. Shame on her. What kind of upbringing is Shame that? Shame on her. Now, here's another thing to reckon railroads. You know, they don't care. They don't care. That's somebody's property. They don't care. But here you go. Look at this guy throwing a brick. They like, yeah, I like nothing better than throwing brick, these union guys. You know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Union. Look at this. Look at people fleeing. Union. Look at that. And of course, Haymarket, you know. Now, all right, moving on. And the last, another thing in the 19th century, and it's not new at all, you hear all this thing about uh, banning certain groups or something. Well, they were doing that a long time ago. And here you see a thing, the publication of the American Patriot to sound the alarm, my friends, so that you will learn the danger that's facing our community, opposed to the Catholics and things like that. Um, you know, uh, so they were uh, active then. 
of one of the groups, of course, the Ottawa Chopper with them Irish guys and the Germans. They like their whiskey. Look at And they got a pallet box. Look at They're controlling the boats. There's all kinds of stuff here. Look at this. Here's the polling place. Let's look at this. Rigged election. Yeah, yeah. Talk about voter suppression. Started in Chicago. There, there's voter suppression right there. All right. Irish industry. Look at this. This is terrible. This is not politically correct. No. I like this one here. Please help the lazy. <laughs> Look at he's got a bomb making. He's got powder here. Wow. <laughs> That's a factory. The only and voting and clothes. I like that. Please help the lazy. A never failing Irish industry. Oh, look at this. Here they are coming in New York. Poorhouse. Look at this. It says here dynamite from New York. Dynamite. And it sinks the there it is, they're bringing the poor house. All the way from Ireland. Yeah. Alright. I'm not in UA, am I? Alright. Now we talk about the other ethnic group who came under uh, assault and push of the Chinese. Here they had a wall too. They wanted a wall to keep them out. Uh, here they're saying that, that the washing machine would replace them. Uh oh. You know. <laughs> hey, gee, I bring my laundry to a nice Chinese couple on 31st Street. They like me. Yeah. And they're not that price any bad. You know. Anyhow, uh, so this, this, you can see that these are the things that people would see to me. Oh, this, uh, another Timmy, the, the Chinese are going to take over baseball. <laughs> yeah, we're the Chinamen to play baseball, 20 bucks, 20 dollars a week. <laughs> They're the great American pastime, a Chinese. Can you believe that? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, this is another one. I, that's what I mean. This, this, this bad. We well, see the same thing today. If you get on Facebook and the right wing things, they have these mines and stuff like that. They have stuff just like this right today. You can go to Facebook and find stuff like this. Now, this really isn't fake news, but I thought I'd throw it in because it was a way to control the mines. There was a gentleman called Lewis Hines. And I have given a program here at, <laughs> at the college. And he shot at least 5,000 photographs of child laborers to change public opinion. It wasn't really fake news, but he accomplished the goal. It took, he spent, I don't know, 25 years doing this. Thousands upon thousands. And if you ever see a ch picture of a child labor in the United States, it's going to be one of his photos. They're, Oh, he did it for about 25 years. No, it, when? when? Late 18, late, yes. Uh, I think he passed on like 1999 or something like that. But he did about, he photographed more, and when they were, they were actually keeping a poll, trying to change the laws, he would say it's time to go out and do some more photographs. And they kept putting them out, you know. Stuff like this, but anyhow, on uh, to some of the political cartoons of the day. Now we're moving into the last part of the 19th century, and of course, one of the biggest baloney wars of all time, uh, without basis in reality, of course, is the Spanish American War. Uh, Hearst and Pulitzer, you say, such sensationalistic. And it's uh, astonishing what else. No weapons of mass destruction in yeah. Cuba, huh, Charlie? Because you know, her said, you furnish the pictures and I'll furnish the war. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. So this was, this was probably, just like the war in Mexico, you know, you can see, and, and even the Revolutionary War, all tainted with stuff that wasn't quite true, wasn't quite there. Okay, another topic at this time, uh, you could go either way on this, uh, they was the disparity in wealth. You need this kind of argument today. Uh, here, minimum wage, I heard that on the news today. Uh, argument about 10 bucks an hour. 
the United States, you only get seven dollars and twenty-five cents. The federal government says, which is is in the poverty level. We hope that's why these people have to have two jobs. Anyhow, uh, some of the things of the day influence opinion uh, uh, against the capitalist class. Uh, one other thing that came about this period, and some of you know about the uh, uh, the Pure Food and Drug Act, uh, there began the regulation of businesses. So there were arguments for this, uh, which obviously the business powers uh, weren't very receptive to, but um, I would say this is not really fake news. It's probably all very accurate. Uh, but I also came across this right now that's put out there that this issue is still around today, that big government is strangling business and holding back uh, job providers. Uh, so this issue is still being debated today, 100 years later. Another group that came under a lot of dispute and arguments, depending on the, what was put out there, was of course the women's rights and suffragettes. You know, like this young lady here, out there, she should be home, maybe like cooking or something, you know. Making cookies. She should make dinner for her husband, you know. Yeah, cookies yeah, and brownies. You know, clean up the house, you know. That's and right. Marching up and down the street. like Washing clothes. You know. Um, anyhow, so the you can hurt. see how the media is. You get it, you get it, it's the first thing they do is going to raise taxes, you know. Uh, there's dissent among themselves. Uh, they can't get along. You, you, you can compare a good woman with a bad. Look at this one. Uh oh. <laughs> see, see this, you know. And right here, you, this is you guys right here. Yeah. <laughs> you go along. Don't let it, you know. So there was a uh, thing like that. Another issue of the period. They came, of course, only in the 30s. Where the, where the uh, the movement, uh, the temperance movement. Uh, anyhow, here you see a family, the Silver family. Look at the one where the, the guy drinks beer, you know. He spends all his money on beer, whiskey, and gin. Look at this. Please come home, Daddy. <laughs> yeah, this is... This is uh, Happens today, too. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, moving on. Now the one thing that caused the difference of opinion, of course, is World War One. You had the peace movement came about. The War Resistance League was founded in 1917, celebrating its anniversary this year, as a matter of fact. Uh, they had the song, anti-war song, I didn't raise my boy to be a soldier, I to shoot I some hope. other mother's boy, Ooh. who dares to put a musket on his shoulder, um, anyhow, you can look it up. Um, and of course, the government was on the other side of this issue here. So there was a competing for the mines here. Now, a lot of people don't realize that in this war, talk about fake news, was news that the Germans marched to Belgium on, to get to France. And so they told these stories that the Germans were beaten up on the Belgians. And there even was the opinion here, like poor Belgium was the expression. <laughs> they were invaded and these evil Germans, the Germans put out their own news to counter the fake news that they were really nice looking feeding kids. And see like this. You can see here the thoroughfare. They're coming through, marching through their country which happens in these places. So, anyhow, I'm kind of going to move on. Another thing that came about this period in which there was differing news reports, <laughs> of course, the people might not be aware of this, uh, the criminal syndicalism for the anarchists, the trade union movement, the union organizers such as myself. In 1905, when the Wobblies were established, unions were not allowed in the city of Chicago. They were against the law. Uh, so there was, you could see the businesses have to be prepared, you know, for these uh, uh, 
the strike leaders, the Uncle Sam, <coughs> Jack, you know, union busting. This is the Wobblies. Uh, came about at this period to counter this. Uh, they came up with their own. They were the champions. If you want to not fake news, I guess you can tell me on what it is. Uh, but in terms of graphics, um, they certainly won the day, um, convincing people. This is Mr. Blackhead, you know, guy who doesn't like, go along with the union, you know. But they love songs. They, they would take songs, they would take melodies uh, of songs, like even hymns, and they put their own words to it. Kumbaya, kumbaya. Yeah. But, all right, moving on. Um, the, uh, actually, you know, that's what I mean. The unions were called restraint of trade. And they were against all this. We hear all those injunctions. Because you, you're interfering with the, the economy. And so it was called criminal. You got, you banded together for criminal purposes. And that was organized labor. Now moving on, of course, the Depression hit. Uh, we had two competing. We talk about another campaign. Things were, things moved. Hoover was promising a chicken for every pot. Um, and of course, Roosevelt, you know, had a socialistic, it, that's his new deal. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Which one do you want, you know? And the Democrats, I love this song. Let's sing I it. I wish they used it. Happy days are here again. The skies above are clear again. Let us sing a song of cheer again. Happy days are here again. <laughs> Where's the bubbles? <laughs> All right, moving on. We're get, we're getting up to date real quick. Uh, World War II, Why We Fight series to encourage. This was like news twisted for recruits in the American Army so that they would have a reason to fight in Japan versus Germany. You can see these on the internet. They're they're free access. They're good shows. Pretty accurate, but the intended to be news, not necessarily fake, but twisted from the American perspective. Housewives, of course, you know, um, things against the enemy. Um, the Chinese, Japanese caught it this time of year, considered a fifth column um, and subject to this kind of negative news reporting. All right, we'll move on after the war. One of the things regarding fake fake news or news that was twisted, of course, was Roswell in 1947, in which the government came along, first reported a flying saucer in aliens, and the next day they changed their story and forced the guy to recant his story and all this. So you can see, now we're getting the more modern twisting of news. Uh, in the 50s, the Red Scare came in. All kinds of nonsense about commies, Russia, McCarthyism. Look at this. There's the succession: strikes, disorder, riot. Go, go to any union. That chaos. That's what you get. Look at this. Right there, Bolshevik. Bolshevik. All right. Fishy Prince Tournament. Call him. Tournament. Yeah. Tournament. Yeah. Get him. Get him. Arrest him. Yeah. It's just tomorrow. Look at. Look at that. Come on. All right. Some well, other news. I don't know if we're going to have Ted around to talk about this. You know, the, we had the evenings on the Kennedy thing, but uh, we don't know what happened. We're getting into the 60s now. Okay, the next one, Vietnam. This is fabricated fake news. This little little thing is the basis of the 10 year conflict. You know, uh, I have a little digression here. Uh, he gave me a picture of Rockwell <laughs> talking about fake imaging and things like that. This guy's floating around the 40s and 50s. You know, enough to make me want to puke. You know, oh, come on. Look at this. 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 Look at this
Beautiful. Yeah, they're they're little, beautiful. Yeah, they're they're beautiful. We like them. Oh, Charlie gets all the shit. Be jealous, man. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> too much of a cynic, Charlie. Yeah, it's the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you see the doggy? <laughs> He's a very military organization. There we go. All right, coming in the 60s, a thing that caught a lot of heat in the media. Hippies. You know, uh, it's the 60s. Hippies. I still remember a conservative guy. I took out his daughter. Neither the mother or the father. They would talk about me in the third person while I was there. <laughs> <laughs> he must have had some sense. <laughs> Cut his hair. <laughs> Does he have any pot? Maybe your friend. This woman, I think, out her daughter, she's, she tells her daughter, why do you put this knife in my heart? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Anyhow, another one. Hey! There's a hey. Yeah, yeah, he's on the moon. That's, That's right. the best. The sound stage of Burbank. Yeah, yeah. All right, Rocky, read them. We all, you know, that's just fake news. All the way fake. Oh, 9 11. Andy's coming Andy. September the 9th. You know, there you go, energy weapon. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's See that? It's aimed right at the building. Yeah. I don't know how that photo got. All right. Another another fake news. This was during the Obama, at least at the start. Uh, he was he had all he had all kinds of plans. New world order. Yeah, obey, obey. Yes. All right, uh, all right. We're getting nearing the end. This is one thing being in transportation. I if I see this, I, I this is all nonsense. No way. This is absolutely Elon Musk. Nonsense. Elon Musk. It's happening today. I posted a retraction for the transportation community. I got 20,000 hits on wow. Facebook. Guys telling me, thank you at last. Somebody is pointing out that there is no real paper loop. They don't have a pod. They got nothing. This was done, maybe tried. 100 years ago, no, and no, no, they no. gave up on it. It's not in they, Dubai. It's so working on it in Dubai. Yeah. Dubai right now. They, they, they. All right, another one. We're getting in the campaign. I'm not going to go to a lot. Help her out. Help her out. Seen Hannity. <laughs> actually had doctors on his show who were diagnosed. <laughs> made a diagnosis. Uh, of her health condition from oh, afar. Help her out. Look at that. Look at that. Never a shot. You know. <laughs> 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 it's a parent. She's, yeah. she's got yeah. bunions. I don't know, but it was really <laughs> this guy. <laughs> that, that I, look at Roosevelt. Look at George. Look at George. Stop this guy. Anyhow, this is the kind of stuff you got. State run media. We all know it's controlled by the government. Liberal media. I heard this today on the news. Sure. Liberal. You know, oh, look at this. So this Rachel. This, she is the wild one. Rachel Maddow. She's, she's got to be put in a cage. She's wild here. You know. And some of these other, you know. How about Sharon? The hell Sharon? Yeah, you know. No, he's, he's not bad, you know. Uh, uh, John Rachel Maddow is the, the one that's the... Anyhow, to near at the end here, I could have written many things on Trump's lies and fake news. Thank you, but amazingly, <laughs> when I put this together, it's with this catalyst, this, and the first 100 died, it took Trump just 36 days to come up with... Look at there we go. 21. Is it a hundred? Did you do a hundred? It is a hundred. You got it, Phil. Get out of here. You got it. Oh, I'd like to. Anyhow, he's still not done with it. Getting done with that. This fiasco with the, oh, he destroyed the base. That he really didn't destroy anything, but I guess. Uh, I like this one here, being a green. The United States is the cleanest country on earth. <laughs>
<laughs> this is impossible. We will continue to be the cleanest and the most environmentally friendly on Earth as the amounts of pull out from the Look at this is just impossible to believe. Yeah. We're burning more, well, we're burning all more fuel than 5,000, 10,000, all the countries. Stinky oil. <laughs> we're burning oil. Fossil fuels like nobody's been. Oh, this is what I, I'm being a transportation guy. I thought you really had a bill signing ceremony. I've been following this for the transit community. My Facebook page on this. And I'm doing, he had a ceremony. And there's the Secretary of Transportation. He didn't sign anything. It's just, there's not even an executive order. He signed a letter to Congress. Well, every now and then they send letters. That don't mean nothing. That's like zero. <laughs> and you don't have a ceremony for a letter. Which, it was an important letter. <laughs> this is unbelievable. Anyhow, thank you very much. Audrey. Charlie! There you go. Oh boy, Charlie! Whether you like it or not, we believe you, son. All right. Come on, Charlie. <laughs> All right, Timmy, tell us the truth. I am not going to be as small winded as Charlie Haydock. Thank God. We wish you were. Nor am I going to tell you the difference between fake news and real news. Uh oh. I just want to ask you one question. What? How many of you have been feeling a little bit more rushed and a little bit more uncomfortable about how the way our government, companies, and other things have been running the last 10 to 15 years? I love Springfield. I love Springfield. Have you found that basically we're all kind of rushed for time? Yeah. Kind of maybe a little bit more yeah. pressed or whatever? Yeah. I wanted to concentrate not so much on the development of fake news because the bottom line is this. The world is speeding up. Thomas Friedman in a recent book called Thank You For Being Late counted on three things that got the world under an accelerated form. The first one was climate change. If you need to understand anything about the Middle East, about Syria and about the Arab Spring. Look at what happened to the climate in the Middle East in the early 2000s. There was a prolonged drought. The farmers went to the cities. They did not get the help that they needed from the government to help resettle. And then, of course, you had the uprisings. When you have hungry people, of course there's going to be an uprising. But it's because of a prolonged drought that started as a catalyst. Africa is the same thing desertification. We're starting to see the same thing happen. People moving off the farms because they no, can no longer support themselves. Then on number two, we have globalization. Although it's a good thing, we do things faster, better, and cheaper than we've had before. And that means sometimes that most skilled people can't get jobs as quickly or as readily as they need to. Robots. The point of the matter is though, there's also a lot of new jobs created in that whole thing. Now I'll, the third thing that's coming that probably is meant more than anything else is we have, first we had climate, then we had globalization, and the third thing more than likely is Moore's Law. You see computing today has gotten real cheap. Many of us can get something and call a taxi cab on a device like this. I know this is an older smartphone, but when you realize that you can call a taxi, it, it breaks a lot of infrastructure. For example, you just plot in a number on a smartphone, 
you get Uber, they take your credit card, they take things, you can rate the driver. That eliminates a lot of middle management, a lot of little middle jobs, but it does make things a lot more efficient. They're talking driverless cars. Perhaps maybe we can now change the environment a little bit more with on-demand publication. The point is, is that how do you solve things like fake news? How do you solve things like globalization? How do you solve the problems? And they're all just speeding up. We can't even keep up in our workplaces half the time. It's like us humans are trying to adapt better, quicker, and cheaper to an ever faster changing world. I mean, look how fast we went from, you know, marriage between a man and a woman to now accepting gay marriage in less than five years. We change a lot, but there are some things that don't change, and that is human nature. We deal with problems like we've always done. It's just it's got to be a little faster and a little quicker. All right. How do we solve the problem of fake news? Simple. It's education. You need to invest in our country, particularly in primary, secondary, and some type of post-education. What many of you may not realize is that high school only became a universal conduct right around the First World War and that type of thing because of the same arguments given. The world's getting too fast. We need to train our people better. That's what brought mandatory high school in and the K-12 through system we have today. What is needed today is a replication of that but up on a, at a post-secondary level. Now, I was shocked when I watched Mayor Ron Emanuel when he gave an address at the National Press Club not too long ago. Surprisingly, Chicago has got some rather ambitious goals for their school system. Number one, he wants to support students not only K through 12, but pre-K through post-secondary education. Meaning that if you get a C or above in high school, He'll put you in to community college. I think it's a B. B. Oh, B for free. For free. Yeah, for, yeah, for B. Steve, get up here. No, 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 no. He's a boy, Steve. And the second thing, okay, it's a, I think it's a B average, you're right. But, you know, the state basically will give them more training after high school. Either they got to have a promise for a job, an apprenticeship, or some plan for future education to get that graduation certificate. That's one thing. You know, if we can believe Rahm Emanuel, which I kind of have a tendency to do so, that's one way that we're going to solve the problem because once you have an educated populace that's backed up, we can handle change much more effectively and better. After they had the high school deal and they got Universal High School, factory workers are able to integrate much better into their factories, but at the same time it increased the knowledge of the consumer to do things like unionize, to understand better that it was, you know, in the 20s, you, should, you raised the wages of workers a little more so they could afford the products they did. What we're seeing today is not necessarily new. It's just much, much more sped up. In conclusion, if I was to give anybody some advice today on keeping a job, on wanting to know new things is to become something what I call the lifelong learner. AT&T right now is undergoing some change in their personnel policy. They require you to take, all right, the beginning of the year they say, okay, you're deficient in these skills and this is what will be needed for later on. And they'll say, you should be able to complete these skills within a year, we'll pay for the education. Yes, it should be done in your own time, but you'll also have first crack at the new jobs if you participate in this. And if you don't want to, we'll give you a nice severance package upon leaving the company. <laughs> now, granted, I'm not, a, not a lot of people, that's the model. But today, many of us are going to be making many career changes over our lifetimes. And the only real good way to stay relevant, especially with the pace of technology and the pace of modern living, and even in the, the, the uh, dissemination and divination and 
proliferation of dissecting fake news from real ones is to learn. And if you want, if all of you, even at your, some of you guys are at an advanced age, you have to remember the world is no longer between capitalism and communism. It's no longer between the socialists and the capitalistic owners. It's a much more multifaceted deal. It's gotten a lot more complicated since the fall of the Berlin Wall. You know, that happened close to 30 years ago. Let's put it this way. We need free trade because the world's becoming one more thing. Our social media has made us a lot smaller. There's not a thing you can do that the government can't find out about. The world's gotten to be a much smaller town. And what we need to do is start acting a little bit more like grown-ups in the way we do things. But I don't want to. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Well, then you're going to be left behind. You'll be sitting at the, You'll be sitting on that bridge. And like every other time in the world, if you're a bum and you don't want to work, you're going to go hungry. So it's not like it's complicated. It's just faster, quicker, and much, much more probably fun. We've been in the biggest flowering of knowledge in human history. We're one of these generations that can really change the world. We have the power to feed everybody, to clothe everybody, and to come up with solutions to world poverty. It's our choice whether we want to do it or not. With that, I, me and Charlie will welcome your questions. Oh, Chris, questions for you and me and I got to go to school for 20 years? Charlie, no, it's not a matter of going. What does pay for my 20 years of education? Life. You're alive. There, there's nothing. Charlie, it's very simple. Sorry. Either Once you're going to adapt okay. and use things like the internet and social media to promote your cause, like you're doing now. You're going to get on Facebook. You're going to learn the way to do things. And you're also going to learn that that's not as effective as it used to be. To acquire a skill to make some guy rich. No, not just acquiring skills to make some guy rich. You're going to be using those skills to get the word out. But nothing, in a recent study, they're finding that the social media is still not the most effective way to do political change. Getting out, talking to people door to door, and the old fashioned campaign of door to door, leaflet building, talking to people is the best way to do it. Yeah, I got a job in the those posts. I said I got. I got a lot of college expenses, you know, I owe money for it. So that's not my problem. That's true. But Charlie, you also got to understand, like you've been to college. Like lying in bed. No. There's ways to take care of that where there's a lot of new things coming out. What do you got? Okay, Steve. I got a question. <laughs> Since we got a lot of trouble, uh, a lot of... Uh, Fear and anxiety. I'm with Sid. I like to go to socialism. What do you guys think it'll take to go to socialism from capitalism? If you, I want to go to socialism. If you want to see the world degrade faster than ever before, Whoa. you go to socialism. Sid, because come on. socialism basically realizes one thing: what? State control of assets. No competition. No globalization. Stagnation in the economy. And. Believe it or not, with the way the markets are reacting today, if we go socialist, disconnect ourselves from the world, hey, we're, 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 we're there. That's not to say you don't need a safety net to take those that can't Equality take care of themselves. For all. Beginning in 1917, there has been nothing but fake, fake, fake news about socialism. Sid even said that years ago. It's like mother's milk. We were raised on it, anti commie stuff. And also to saw it, there's illustrations of it. Now we have to overcome that because the, the merchants and manufacturers, 1917, recognized that their system was at risk. Yeah. And it, it, the goose was not going to continue to raise their legs. That's why you had the criminal syndicate, criminal, they're called criminals, that fought the system. And certainly anybody that turned in, into socialism or commie, if you wish, it's what happened to them, you know. Where is ruined or incarcerated or things like that, you know. Okay.
Let's okay. take your question. But that's changing. But that means so, 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 don't you agree that uh, uh, U.S. universities are, are liberal propaganda mills? That's fake news that they're teaching the kids. Uh oh. You see, okay, we're going to address this real quick. I think that in a lot of cases there may be a grain of truth to that. There's a lot of liberal professors in those universities. But you also got to understand that you're probably under the spell of a lot of the stuff from Fox News coming for it. I'll give you a little story on this, okay? Give us a story. I know, I went to my dad's brother's funeral. And one guy tells me, he says, yeah, you know, Obama's a socialist and he's not a citizen. And I, I said, oh, God. I looked at him and I said, have you got, where do you watch your TV at? Fox News. Uh, where do you uh, get your stuff from? Uh, this. And I said, you know, you would be a lot better off turning that TV off and reading the newspaper. Yeah. You'd be a lot better off turning to another dial, like oh. National Public Radio, for example, oh. hearing the same thing from another side. I'm talking about the way the liberals change U.S. history. They change in history. There are 2,400 colleges staffed, staffed by an incalculable number of academics. There's no process. You, your assertion is not based on fact. And I probably Unless you said Charlie. there's some control agent that recruits particular individuals in all of these 2,400 institutions. What's, how is it achieved? How is the selection process affected to control those employees, if you wish, of all those institutions spread across the land. So that you, you I question, I shouldn't like to answer a question with a question, but how did they choose those professors as opposed to other ones? Who set this process in motion? You also have to understand. What evidence is there of a selection process that picks some and excludes others. Is there? You also have to remember too that when a conservative has an enemy, it's a lot easier to blast them. If they have no enemies, there's nothing to talk about. Every, every no, I'm, I'm, I'm very serious about this. Every time, I know where you're coming from with the liberal bias in colleges. I tend to believe that there is a tendency towards that with some of the Eastern institutions. It's done by selection committees, by tenured professors, things like this. Not every one of them, though. You don't have any okay. evidence. But the thing, the thing is, you have Liberty University, for example, like Jerry Falwell's churches run. And there's tons and tons of other organizations in this country that are still free. For me to simply say that it's all controlled by a liberal group would clearly be heretical because it's not. Well, there's, a the wide board, there's a wide you, wait voice. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You're proposing some sort of conspiracy. You don't say how, it, how it's affected. You see, that's Who the, controls the curriculum? Who well, controls the all, white men in history. all the textbooks that are going in college bookstores? It's not all the way. It's just white guys who usually get problems solved. If we go to the Thorium Energy Alliance, for example, it's a bunch of middle-aged white guys who are proposing nuclear power or reinvention. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I don't, I don't, I don't give your assertion any validity whatsoever. But I mean, thanks for you bringing it up. The burden of proof lies with you, okay, sir, to show me how it came about, when it happened, when it started, who did it. Who would control? Give me a name of some people well, who are in charge. Give Berkeley. me the names Berkeley. Oh, Berkeley. of the people Berkeley. who are in charge of it. Berkeley. Would you tell me the names of the people and how they controlled over 2,000 colleges staff by all those departments of all the subject matter? And okay, Charlie, we're beating this. We're beating this for there, sir. Thanks for bringing up the question. I know we haven't answered it adequately. I have. But, well, you have, but I, I, I'd still like to take so this question a little bit more. But. You know, you, you cited some strange religious institution well, sure. that's off in the outer space that I wouldn't recommend to anybody. I, so you're I'm telling sorry, me CBN think... University is, is full of crap then, right? Yeah, I, I, uh -oh. I think they're strange. Peculiar then that's where I'm going to disagree. When you're on the fringe, 
They're on the fringe of academia. I don't think so. All right. They're not. Well, Liberty Germany, Baptist College is a. I attend a Baptist church on Sunday morning, Charlie, and I, I also happen to know that I perceive a lot of good stuff there. I believe in the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ. I believe in the golden rule. Give us a I preach. Believe, I believe in a lot of other things. But I really think, and what that requires of me is to love my neighbor as thyself, which means I can't choose whether you go to heaven or not. I can't choose the way you believe. You do, and it's between you and God. And have you been saved? Huh? Have you been saved? I believe I have. I had a conversion experience in college during my sophomore year. I can talk more about it if you'd like. One of the things, I, I just enjoy coming here. But I'm not going to get into it because I think we could spend all night on that. Jonathan, you've got a question. Yeah, a lot of uh, things that we've heard in the media, like from people in positions of power, are things we need. Like, we need wars, we need oil. But then they say, but what we don't need is socialism in its democratic form. And it just seems really interesting in the media how they never go interview people where those wars are going to happen, and they also never go interview ordinary people in those countries where socialism is actually working, like Norway, Sweden, Iceland, Denmark. Why don't they ever go and actually talk to people on the street in these countries where the things we need are going to have either a negative or a positive impact or already have had a long... Why don't they go interview the ordinary, everyday people instead of say, we're the experts. We've already decided the conclusion for you. It is my contention that Norway is not socialist. It's got a very generous, a very generous welfare state. You are taxed at about the rate of 60 percent. True. Over all your earnings. True. In the United States, it's about I think 30 to 35 percent. If we wanted that same state in the United States, go ahead and tax us at 60 percent. If we want, it takes roughly, from what I understand, about a 40 to 50 percent tax rate to keep the citizens educated, fed, clothed, medical care in here. And, and the thing is, you know, you gotta, there's a lot of things government does well. Like what? <laughs> He's got a point, and I don't know, I don't know the answer as to the United States, and I, as a labor educator, I've heard this many, many times, and there's total concurrence on this. The United States is the worst place for employees. He's right. This treats its workers more than any other country. And you can dispute this if you wish. It's been going on for many years. No, no, no. They, um, Margaret, give them help. Give them help. Actually, the Chinese have guarantees. That's what I mean. It's, it's um, difficult to compare the systems, but historically, the United no, that's what I mean. The United States has gotten away with more over the years than I. I don't know why. That's why the American workers are the hardest to put more time in, possibly only with sweatshops on Earth, and to, by the millions. What's the average American worker these days? Sixty hours? Yes. Okay. Oh no. All right. No, they 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 are opposed. Not that they are opposed to employees working at home because it's been found you end up putting in free time. What do you mean? There's there there are still employers who don't believe in the. We saw in the 30s there are some of the things. You don't believe in the standard work week. I've had cases, many cases like this. There's a woman that we got back wages for. She says she couldn't understand that. She said, you have a job? You work. You just work. You come in early, you stay late. She had to work for two months. She came to me. She lost the case. I had to pay back dollars. She says, I don't understand this. What did I do wrong? Okay. It goes on and on. People are captured right. pieces, man. Is there any more questions oh, from the audience? Oh, that's baloney. Nobody puts in 40 hours. All right. It's about, uh, I think it's time we get Andy up here and uh, start our rebuttals period. Yeah. Um, boy, Andy. Let's thank yeah. Charlie again for a good, well done yeah, presentation. Boy. Charlie. Charlie. Yeah. And of course, Charlie. he is our yeah. boy, Jim. Yeah. But I've been hosting too, so. Yeah.
I was very good job. I was brainwashed by those liberal liberal professors. <laughs> no, no. All right. He tells me to go, go back to school. It's been, I was 35 years old. I hadn't had a job. We now have an open microphone. We have several places we can take some chairs. I'm going to let, I'd like to start the rebuttal period off. Remember, me and Charlie get the last word. We're going to give you about four minutes each. Uh, Andy, four minute clock. Who wants to start off? We need to get somebody up here. All right, Margaret, come on up. You got four minutes. Carl, Margaret. Yeah, yeah. Give them hell. Don't hold back. Oh, we don't have, oh, all right, we don't shout. have a mic. Oh, okay. Shout it out. Yeah. You can shout it out, shout. Margaret. Yeah, I'll shout it. That, that's good. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, I was very interested in this topic tonight because I have so frequently been upset at the College of Complex meetings by the trashing of facts originating from perfectly reputable sources. Facts don't matter to some folks. And uh, it is particularly upsetting to hear such sources unfairly attacked. And I don't mean not whether it's the New York Times or the Economist, that's for an outstanding scholarly publication is trashed. Now, I think this is, this is utterly foolish and stupid. I mean, if you don't want to get the facts, then don't even bother using your head at all. And you're saying that the last, uh, you're saying that the, uh, that what you want to believe is all that matters, not what really is true. And it is a um, typical Trump approach, this is. Okay. Thank you, Margaret. Oh, Thank you, yeah. Margaret. Right I've heard a lot of nonsense here all the time. She's right. She's right. I've heard a lot of nonsense. Gibberish. We hear a lot about homicide. Homicide. What's been happening? Are we shooting more? Are we killing more people? The answer is no, we're not. In 1950, the rate was 3.2 per 100,000. In 2003, it was 10.8. So it's slowly going down. We have these mass murders, but the rates are slowly going down. Nevertheless, homicide rate is the second leading cause of death for 15 to 24 year olds. It's the primary cause of death for among black people 15 to 24, black men. White women, they don't get into this thing. It's the men are killing each other, they're killing each other off. Homicide rates. Black men killing whites, 7.6%. Blacks killing blacks, 90%. Whites killing by whites, 82%. Blacks, whites killing by blacks, 14.8%. Okay, here's one for you. Gun violence annually. Less than 150, Germany, Italy, France, etc. <coughs> more than 10,000 in the U.S. Who's fighting who? Next. That's so you, Andy. Yeah. Got an open mic. Come on up. Open mic. Um, just want to say a few things about fake news and Donald Trump and climate change because you can see that Donald Trump appointed Rex Tillerson as the Secretary of State and Rex Tillerson in Exxon has been providing fake news disinformation about climate change for decades. So you've got Donald Trump, who has been brainwashed, programmed with Rex Tillerson, Exxon information about climate change. And the problem you have now is it's exponential. Things are moving very, very quickly. We may go ice-free in the Arctic this summer. 
maybe next year. When that happens, it's a very consequential event. Uh, it's going to heat things up even faster than it's going now. By the way, most of the warm-up right now is in the Arctic. So here in Chicago, it's pretty nice. Some places around the world, it's, it's a nightmare. But Donald Trump doesn't have much of a concern about climate change. And he wants to push ahead with the program of Rex Tillerson and the guy who was in charge of Exxon before him. And they use a lot of uh, uh, think tanks and uh, uh, PR people that have pushed this for a long time. But time is running very, very short. And if something isn't done like yesterday, uh, it, it really will get to be too late. Uh, and and I would just, with Donald Trump, you know, a lot of people, and I, I could agree with this, say he's a sociopath or a psychopath. One advantage of that is that that individual will do whatever it is they think is in their own interest or perhaps in the interest of their family. You know, they're not ideologically attached to some sort of a religious uh, belief system, etc. So he could change his mind very quickly concerning uh, what's happening. Uh, so I, I just, you know, kind of, I, I would say this, uh, it's not a very good situation we're looking at. Um, you know, the, uh, uh, eventually the grain crops around the world are going to get pretty much wiped out the way it's going. You've had some pretty devastating stuff up in the Dakotas right now in the wheat crop. Um, you know, and if you, if, in investment advice, uh, you know, move your money or what money you have into agricultural commodities because they're going to be getting uh, more and more expensive as, as the warm-up continues. Uh, but in, in all seriousness, it's, uh, time is short. Everybody needs to look at what's happening. Go to Arctic News website or if you use Facebook, something I just started doing after a lot of years. If you use Facebook, they have a, a, a Facebook page, Arctic News. You'll get information about what's going on in the Arctic and what is happening there is what reality is. The fake news doesn't give you anything. It's never mentioned. It was never mentioned in the presidential debates. And, uh, you know, without you knowing what's going on, uh, things are just going to unfold. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. All right. All right, all right. Come on, we got an open, we got an open thing. Next speaker, Sid. Who's next? Sid. Socialism. Socialism. Yeah. Tell us how to do it. Capitalist guy. Yeah. Come on. Tell him where it's at. The latest statistics is five individuals own as much wealth as half the population of the earth. Oh. And one of them is Bill Gates. I don't remember the names of the other ones. I'll bring you back a dollar. You've got class struggle going on right now all over the place. If you look what's happening in Europe, in England, what they got on that um, deal with the with Europe, and they pulled out Brexit. I forget what they call it. And uh, Brexit, 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 Brexit. Yeah, they got it out of, out of Brexit. And here in the United States, the people are fighting for higher wages. And you have the food workers like at McDonald's and places like that go out on strike. And in Illinois, the uh, the wage, the lowest wage, will be about eleven dollars this year. So it's a little bit of a gain there, but still we're in a lot of trouble. Not only in the United States, but in the world because Trump is adding something like $550 billion to the uh, 
arms race. Fifty-four billion. Fifty-four billion. Yeah, fifty-four billion. And so we have in the United States something like forty-one percent of all the armaments in the world. And the United States uses the excuse about uh, Russia and Putin Sorry. that they're in the Ukraine. And what's in the Ukraine now, the government that took over, is fascist. And a lot of uh, governments that have put that the United States has either overthrown itself or had surrogates overthrow them in order to install fascism. And the beginning of fascism is right here. They want to do away with Medicaid and eventually with Social Security and other social benefits that the government actually didn't give us. It was a struggle by workers and other people during the 30s that brought in Social Security and during the 60s, under Johnson's presidency. <laughs> so what you need in the United States and a lot of other countries is more class consciousness. And I understand that more people are joining up in socialist groups. I get a newspaper, a very small newspaper, and they said something like 800 people in the past month or two has joined the Communist Party. Uh -oh. Because what is happening, people are starting to see who really controls the United States and the direction it's going, and it isn't very pretty. So if you want to make change in the climate and everything else, you have to have a lot of people getting together and struggling, organizing, and demonstrating to change the direction in which people are going. Otherwise, you won't have no life on this planet. And like the previous speaker said, if we don't do something, we won't have no planet to live on. So if you don't, and the type of system of capitalism that we have, monopoly capitalism, where a few people control everything and mostly are sociopathic, the only thing they think about is greed, making more and more money. The way they make money, they and there's no end to it under capitalism. And that's the value system. Money is more important. Profits are more important than people. And that's the direction we're in. And that has to be changed by going to a different system. All right, sir. Thank you, comrade. Brother. Thank you, comrade. Thank you, comrade. Jonathan! Tommy! <laughs> Jonathan! <laughs> Thank you to an excellent presentation uh, by uh, Charlie and Tim. Turn off the Fox News. Put down Monsanto's food. There's more than just red blue. A We the People evolution will be here soon. It's a couple of dollars an hour and dozens of dollars a day and hundreds of dollars a week because zero would be too obvious. It's a grain of sand an hour, a flake and jan a day, some blades of grass a week, because a ghost still needs a spell to cast. We the people have the scars to prove it, and that's why we are unstoppable movements. Uh, the most quoted author in the world is Noam Chomsky, and he has a new book. It's called Requiem for the American Dream, The Ten Principles of Concentration of Wealth and Power. Uh, please, I encourage everybody here to go to your local bookstore and support uh, this voice of grassroots democracy. Uh, I really enjoyed today's presentation. I wish you guys had another hour. Thank you so much and happy fourth. Yay! All right. And Happy Canada Day! Happy Canada Day! And
Go ahead. Mr. David Zucker. No, no, the what what's the news? Well, first of all, loud, please. First of all, we heard the New York we heard the New York Times praised. We also heard Fox Fox News Channel praised. All right. And I hardly think that I will say this about Fox News Channel. It has about as much worthwhile news as Pravda or as best yet did in the days of the Soviet Union. It has about as much worthwhile news as the Volkischer Beobachter or Der Sturmer during the Nazi era. I hardly consider that to be worth watching. Second, when George was busy, that was the fellow who was sitting at my table. I disagree with him not so much because he's a conservative. That, I have lots of disagreements <laughs> because he's got a big mouth. Uh -oh. And he was standing, he was busy hollering about liberal professors and liberal universities, a stock charge that I've been hearing since I was a college student 40 years ago, and even before that when I was in high school. Well, I got news for him. Where does he think Milton Friedman came from? Really, Milton Freeman, that great liberal from the University of Chicago? I don't, I don't think so. So, I don't know, I think some of these people need to go back to school themselves. Thank you. Say, go back to school, wow. man. He's going to be great. Yeah. Continuous learning. Okay. Continuous learning. Next, get up there. Get up there. Up there. <laughs> All right. Sid. This is only one state that has a million ways of living. All right. All right. Next rebutter. I heard this. I heard on the radio. Next rebutter. Hi. Loud, please. Okay, yeah, hi. Uh, I'm Ellen Corley, and hi, Ellen. Uh, good to be here. This is my, I don't know, sixth or seventh time here. I love this place. Uh, I, I love free speech. I think it's where it's at. Um, uh, you know, I'm 62 years old and I've uh, studied, you know, the masters in teaching high school and business and research, but it all comes together. It all comes down to free speech and fake news. You know, we, we need evidence-based policies without, if the corporations control the news, which they do, Fox News, ABC, NBC, they're, you know, they're just making it, uh, a contest between, you know, it was. I watched Fox News the other night, and they were just slurring Mika Brzezinski, and that's. It's like it's a war, an advertising or media war between these people, and no information. How can the people make any decisions or make a right decision? They, we have to have an informed electorate. I think we need to have. A, a survey of everyone. I have seen that the Fox News people who watch it are the least informed, the most misinformed people there are. And it's deliberate supply side, Milton Friedman, you know, top down. They, it is a war on labor. And it, you really see a lot here. I've, I've learned a lot listening to NPR. But in Chicago, I was raised by a Milton Friedman, Alan Greenspan stepfather. And so, and I was brainwashed. But now, you know, that I'm, I've seen the, I've been brainwashed. I'm just horrified to see NPR become more corporate. I, I can see the creeping, you know, um, influence of, of money, you know, when they, they say, oh, we, we're 60% controlled by you. Well, that other 40 corporate personhood has a lot more influence. Um, I just want to say one thing. I went to a talk the other day, and I, I spoke up about fascism on NPR, and they, they kept most of my comment there uh, because it was someone who talked about the deep state. And he, um, is it real? And I was... You know, they were a little conservative, but uh, it is real. And it, and the only way to, it's a fascist deep state. And it's scary that a lot of people just say, I don't believe you. Um, I would like to give a talk here at some point and really give the evidence of do this. It, it has to be it, tested. Do it, do it. Yeah, do it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I, at the pool today, it's a small world, the woman said, Sherman Skolnick, who I have his two books, started here. He was one of the original guys here, apparently, and I've got his book, and he, you know, he was one of the few, I guess, investigative reporter who's saying, speaking truth to power and saying things, uh, and I, we need to check these facts, you know, rather than just say, oh, they they just brainwashed us, but uh, you know, was Rahm Emanuel in the air gun? That's what Sherman Skolnick calls his father and asks him. We we all need to be journalists and really, you know, pushing the envelope because the guys just stay in power that are there. And um, so, thank you. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. We got more rebutters. Yes. You're up, Pat. Oh. Here's a journalist. Yes. Yes. He's a journalist. I yes. do fake oh, news. Man. Oh, man. Fake news, news. Yeah. I don't even know when I'm doing it. Oh. Oh. You're not like you to be on your orders. But do you? <laughs> anyway, uh, all kidding aside, we are facing probably the most challenging crossroads. Western civilization has had maybe since the end of feudalism, maybe here, here. since the maybe since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. On one hand, we have this absolutely awesome technology being developed faster than most of us can understand it. On the other hand, we have total meltdown in this country, at least, as far as anything resembling a responsible government. Now, I'm not saying this because the current occupant of the White House purported to be a Republican. Believe it or not, I know Republicans, and their response to Trump is, quote, I know not the man. You know, we're faced with a guy who knows so little, he doesn't realize he knows so little. A guy in this day and age who denies global warming, denies climate change, really has some problems, especially if you take a look at, someone pointed out to the conditions changing in the Arctic. You don't even have to go that far. You only, you only need to go a little bit further north into some of the maritime provinces in Canada, and you will see how it has begun to affect their fishing industry over, you know, which they, they were very dependent on it and still are. We are also seeing a situation where our country, which has always prided itself on having a healthy sense of sovereignty, is going to lose that sovereignty simply because of the fact that the people that we have entrusted this awesome power in do not know how to use it. Some of the things, and, I, and I, I'm not trying to do an anti-Trump uh, diatribe here, but some of the things that have happened coming out of the White House in the last two months remind me of the worst days of the fall of the Roman Empire. The only thing, the only thing there was the Romans, at least the Caesars, in their days of decadence, at least provided the masses with some entertainment. Here, here is a sad state of affairs when friends of mine and I pick up the phone in the morning and say, what did the president say this morning that was hilarious? You know, I realize comments like this are probably at some point going to get me locked up. I am confident, however, that I am going to be in very good company. Let's not, let's not despair totally because history has shown that even worse than a tyrant is the person who takes that power doesn't know how to use it. More often than that, they are quickly swept by the wayside. And remember, we have two remedies at the disposal of responsible members of Congress. One is the impeachment option, the other is the 25th Amendment. Now, those two options are available, and I am willing to bet that within the next year, year and a half, 
one of those options is going to be used. What's the 25th Amendment? The 25th Amendment allows Congress, uh, under certain conditions, to remove a president who is no longer able, if he ever was, to carry out his duties. You know, it's not a coup. Uh, it's the kind of thing that many corporations have, where if the CEO is having major problems, uh, he can be uh, retired. Uh, there is this option. Uh, we have to watch, we have to wait, we have to be careful. Uh, but uh, let's not give up hope. Uh, this is not third century Rome, although it's beginning to smell like it. Yeah. Mike Pence! Mike Pence is next! Mike Pence! 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 Mike Right. Speak loudly tonight, Mo. Speak loudly. Speak oh, loudly. Yeah. There's no microphone. There's no microphone, so oh, speak okay. loudly. I can speak loudly, okay? You Thank you. Yes. No. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Number one, I just want to make a couple of comments. Volume went I'm down. <laughs> I can't be going back and forth. Now. Yeah, yo. Uh, if you'll stop interrupting, I'll be able to. Don't vacillate. <laughs> Yeah. Um, where was I? Oh yeah. Before I make what I, the comment I was intending to make, I want to compliment Pat. Where are you, Pat? Where is Pat? I can't see. But in any case, I want to compliment Pat and say something like we're facing a, bit, a great disaster. Well, I disagree with him. Donald Trump is probably speeding at five or ten percent. But we were on the road to disaster before Donald Trump, which could be the topic of another speech. Now, the presentation I want to make alludes to last week's presentation, and it's an example of fake news helping people to get closer to the inner truth. And here is my, um, it's going to be an art, I'm going to send this in as an article for an introduction to the first of fake news. The headline is, Scoundrels Saving Society, Respectables Through the Lane. With the Republic facing uh, destruction, the leading scoundrels of America, most of them criminals, have struck a crucial blow in its defense, while leading citizens from clergymen to professors to government officials have been sitting on their hands. NAPA, that's not NAPA, that's NAPA, N-A-F-F-A, the National Association of Flim Flam Artists, <laughs> meeting in Charlottetown, West Virginia, nobody got that, uh, have bestowed their con man uh, crown in 2016 on the election officials of seven states for their brilliant 2016 election con. Um, which switched the elections from the Republicans to the Democrats in seven states. Now this was proven statistically by last week's speaker. Uh, and in an emerging uh, uh, emergency post-convention award, um, the Supercon of 2017 uh, has been presented, bestowed upon President Donald Trump for his creation of a purely Trumpite election fraud commission to investigate what he claims are the major multi-million vote frauds, but which virtually all election experts agree account for but a few thousand, and none of them decisive. The state election officials changed the vote counts by millions in one of the most massive frauds in U.S. history. Now, the fraud of 28, uh, 20, uh, <laughs> the bank fraud was, uh, put to the bank, 2008. That was the most massive fraud in terms of trillions of dollars. The banks sucked 18 trillion dollars uh, out of the economy um, because everyone could see the whole financial system of the world was going to collapse. That's what the capitalists have been doing to us. So we had to give them $18 trillion 
of the people's money. That was the most massive fiscal fraud in history. The election fraud is the most massive power transfer in history. And I'm going to submit this as an article. I've got a couple more paragraphs to write. Uh, but if, and if you want more information, I can explain to you what is the nature of the red ship by which really all entirely Republicans switch the vote to Democrats. I just want to make one comment about the Illinois election. Uh, 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 Post-election uh, post polling, in the, like outside the polling place, showed uh, so Pat uh, Quinn with a, um, about a three-point lead, and um, Governor Rauner won by only uh, 0.5%. Uh, in other words, there was a massive theft by the Republican, but Pat Quinn would have lost anyhow. In most of the states, this red ship, the gap between the um, most uh, voting polls and the reported re election result it did result in the election Republicans, including Trump. So I just thought I'd explain that. All right, all right, all right, all right. I'll take it like four minutes here. I'd like to follow up on what our previous two speakers had to say. Uh, Americans, <laughs> by courtesy of the mainstream media, were living, the bulk of Americans are living under this umbrella of mythology. There's some really, really strong myths that are promoted by the media. And if we're going to move forward as a nation, we have to see through those myths and begin to look at where we are on the uh, on the, the scale of Project Censored every year publishes this book with the top 25 censored stories and the book has a chapter of junk food news where they talk about how they fill the airways with junk and then commercials, so there's no time left to tell us about what's really happening. It's called Project Censored. Censored News and Annual Handbook comes out every October. Some of the, the mainstream myths, big ones, that we're living under that we have to look forward to. The number one myth right now, the great myth, is that Republicans are getting elected, that uh, somehow these people are getting elected over, over the Democratic votes. That is not the case. The electronic voting machines have been put in place in key states so that after these people, the Republicans, get voted out, they can change the vote totals after midnight. It's called the red shift, and keep in these criminals that are masquerading as our Republican elected officials. That's the first big myth. The second big myth is that we were attacked by Muslims on 9-11, and so we have the Patriot Act, we have the myth of Homeland Security, uh, we have the myth of uh, the militarization of all of our police stations nationwide. All of this stems from the myth that was planted in this country on the night of 9-11. That handout I gave you, incidentally, describes what is known all over the world. <laughs> Ellen, can you tell those people to keep the noise down? Thank you. Um, America would be a different place. We can move forward if we get rid of the idea that our troops are fighting for freedom and justice in foreign lands. That's not what's going on. There's 900 bases around the world where the American military is recognized as the largest killing machine on the planet. There's groups of veterans, veterans for 9-11 truth, uh, veterans for a clean environment. Uh, they're teaching that the U.S. military is the largest polluter on the planet. Global warming and climate change is very real. There's an article that came out two days ago 
about climate scientists, a group of them saying, we have a window of no more than four years. We have to be 2020. If we don't have a mobilization in place to really cut back on fossil fuels, by 2020, we're going to pass the tipping point, and then uh, we won't be able to do anything about the ice melting north and south and raising sea levels by 30 or 40 feet in this century. Climate change, the U.S. military recognizes that climate change is the number one threat facing America. It's not international terrorism. Warren Even, Buffett agrees with you. What? Warren Buffett yes, agrees Warren, with you. Warren Buffett and a bunch of other millionaires <laughs> are tooling up oh, yeah, uh, to save their assets from climate change. But we have to get past the mythology that the major media. Incidentally, people have been if you didn't know it, the journalism schools all over the country list journalism schools list Fox News as the number one propaganda machine in America. Fox News has been banned in certain parts of Canada because they say you're not news, you're propaganda. And so uh, all kinds of studies show that people that listen to and watch Fox News are not only among the most uninformed people on the planet, they're they're misinformed. They're basically terrifyingly ignorant of what's going on out in the real world. So anybody wants any more information about uh, censored news or anything, see me at the end of this. Thank you. <laughs> Who's next? I just wanted to let everybody know I saw a real interesting program, a little part of a program called, it's on a channel called Vice. What? Vice, V I C E. It's on cable, and of course, Bill Maher is an executive producer on it, etc. But what they did, they went to Russia, where there are cities on the edge of Siberia that are celebrating global warming. And the reason they're celebrating is because the permafrost, which was originally unfarmable, is starting to become more and more farmable. They're actually be able to plant wheat further inland. Also, not only that, they're anticipating more revenue from that within their economy. Also, the areas up north that were frozen and could not be shipped through are thawing out. So they're actually projecting shipping lanes to make it cheaper for them to ship to China, to us, wherever. So that's been talked about here with the Northwest Passage also. And so I'm all for, like, you know, I'm against global warming. This should not be happening. But it's very unusual to watch this program and see people actually celebrating it for the sake that now they could actually farm areas that were never able to be farmed before. So it was just an interesting little thought. And there's also another, uh, I guess, the other side of recycling, too. There's actually some that shows recycling has more carbon putting in the air than actually a well-maintained landfill which is another interesting thing. But that's a topic for another night. So anyway, I just thought I'd mention it was just unusual to see like the hell's a well maintained landfill. Uh, there are several out in San Francisco area. It's well maintained. Yes. yes. It's like they're putting uh, soil on the top and uh, taking the methane out and powering it. But that's a different topic. But the the global warming thing affected me and I like I never realized people would actually celebrate that because we're all against that, but so it's gone. Take the pile of the garbage. All right. Canopy over. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Another topic. Yeah, right here. That's about it, Charlie. You guys get the last word. Uh, we got one more rebutter. One more rebutter? Yes. I think four minutes or less. I thought I will come here. Oh, hello. <laughs> and uh, suggest that we have a collection. Maybe we can afford a backup microphone. No more. No. 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 No.
we feel like everybody hears us, but in fact, we mumble to ourselves. And we don't realize it. I'm one of them, right? I must admit. So even the microphone in here wouldn't help. With some chatter going on, too, but it doesn't help. I got only a couple of points like that. The last speaker had some good point there about Russia because uh, I had a friend of mine that was telling another friend that, look, uh, Russia's agriculture cannot compete with ours because we got the best technology, blah, blah, blah. In fact, about one third of Russia, you cannot cultivate anything. They have to far north, and like he said, Vermont. But those that celebrate that they might get some ground and useful agriculture to the north, they might lose it to the south because it might end up under the sea. And Trump, so many people mention him here that it's true, he doesn't believe in climate change, but some, he probably will believe it if he sees New York and Florida under war. Then he definitely will believe. Now, um, about this business of uh, myths and falsehoods in the news, you know, I bet you all of you at one time. Um, when you were a teenager or not, and above, and even, even now you probably believe it, that uh, you read something and our press will say, well, in Russia, something happened, everybody knows about it, we are well informed about it, but in Russia it was only given half of the story. Boy, that really makes you mad. Those damn Russia, right? Wrong. Because sooner or later you will find out that we do the same thing here, damn it. I mean, I really miss Abraham because during one of my questions, uh, I, I made a comment and I said, well, we claim ourselves to have free press. And I said, no, what we have is selective free press. And he came out here during the bottle and said, we might have the a selective free press, but we have the best selective free press in the world. <laughs> so we keep kidding ourselves. You know, and, and, and when it came to capitalism, I like that point. Capitalism and socialism and communism. You know, during Nixon administration, who was that? Uh, Joe Shuping who said, um, who cares about the mouse trap so long as it catches a mouse? <laughs> and you know, and, it, and you look at it right now, and it's so true. You know that 89 demonstration about for democracy, and, and uh, they had that Statue of Liberty rip replica on. They're really in the dust because now they really have a good and, and most of the Chinese really this yeah. Yeah. oh jeez wait a minute one more point the greatest myth the greatest myth just allow me one Come word on, say the it, greatest say myth it. we have is that nobody is about the law how many believe that here okay let's let's oh. get we gotta get we gotta get Charlie yeah. all right Charlie go ahead and wrap up. I'll go after you because I'm more intelligent. Thank you very much. I just hope you, you gathered some idea that there has been significant discussion of multiple topics over the history of this country, in the beginning with the media uh, in the colonial period and continuing on to today. It's possibly not in the direction we'd like it to be going right now. Um, but as you can see, we've had multiple topics, and sometimes we revisited the same topics and haven't resolved it, but the political dialogue goes on. Um, one thing I should say that generated this was the social media 
surrounding the campaign. And it, it rendered the communication device worthless because there's, there was no structure as to what was accurate and true and what was total, total fabrication. And my only advice to you is rely in, in, in libraries, we relied on established publishers for books because they stood by their books. A publisher, by the way, people don't realize this, no reputable publisher ever put out a book with a disclaimer in it. Either they was a good literature or not. The same thing, stick with the established resources because there's so much noise out there, it's just inconceivable. It's rendered social media virtually worthless. Unless I see a recognized source, New York Times, Post, some other publication, columnist, author, or individual, I don't go near it because it's just been infiltrated and there's, I'm sorry Tim, you end up with people who are simply trying to secure your attention for the purpose of advertising and they have no grounds. They will put out headlines, alleged articles, and things like this just to get you to click on that site and, and for a few seconds um, generate your attention for the purpose of making money. And that's why this is, they are looking at it to do, it may sound like censorship, but versus the, the worthlessness of this medium, it is of no value. You have to personally filter it, otherwise don't buy it, don't go near it. All right, thanks a lot. Happy Fourth of July. She's a grand old flag. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Happy Canada Day. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. We have been hearing this same debate since the invention of the printing press. Yeah. You just heat it up a lot more. It's just taken care. It's just been... <laughs> it has just been speeded up a lot more, so we've got to think a little faster. You want to hear what I think the biggest myth that we have right yes. now? Yes, yes. Yeah, what's the biggest myth? The biggest myth is that we can't do nuclear power again. Thorium! Bring in thorium, molten salt. Thorium! Thorium! I'll explain that in another... Uh, Thing. No, right now. In addition to what we've seen at the college, Charlie's got a good lineup coming up. I want to say thank you guys all for coming, supporting the college. Without you, it wouldn't really work. And uh, we'll just say right now, college adjourned. Yay! Yeah. And let's thank Tim for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got no, two but don't you go away or not? Um, Tim, I actually got him taking home. Pardon me. I got him taking home. He's still taking home. All right. So well, 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 the direction you're going. going to head east first. Yeah, that's all I need. Right. 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 Oh, yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah,